Okay, and then today we are talking about some some interesting thing, phenomena. So when you can see this one and this one, you can this is called frenum. Frenum is kind of very tight tissue which can attach this upper or lower lip to the your gingiva, your periodontal tissue. So sometimes this kind of uh, line is quite close to your tooth and then it will cause some diastema. What is the meaning of diastema? Diastema is some kind of gap between the front tooth. Okay, this is called diastema. And sometimes because of this uh, frenum, sometimes this gingival is receded, which is called gingival recession. Because continuously when you open your mouth, this uh, lower lip can stretch out this gingival to the lower direction, and then this physical force can induce this gingival recession. So in that case, we have to cut and reposition this frenum to the upper part for diastema and more lower part for your gingival recession. So this is the main two causes to, to causes by frenum or my positioning close to your tooth. One is diastema and the other one is gingival recession. So for that, we need phrenectomy. So phrenectomy is literally where ectomy means some cutting or removal, okay? So phrenectomy is a phrenum ectomy, cutting of the phrenum. So basically, this is a elastic phrenum. This uh, your tongue also can attach to your gingival, and then there is some very stiff tissue, which is called lingual phrenum. And then when you have very short pronunciation, sometimes people want to cut this kind of lingual frenum to enhance your pronunciation. So let's see what is the phrenectomy. Sorry, it will take some time. Okay, let's watch this video together. So, as you can see, this uh, lower limb phlegm is very close to your tooth. So, maybe some gingiva can be res receded, or this, you know, it's not good for your oral health. That's why we have to cut and reposition this frenum to the downside. So first, we cut this frenum, but and then you have to confirm that this frenum is very tightly attaching the bone on your lower tooth. So we have to totally rebuild this frenum from the basal part, and then make some incision to expose the bone also. Can you see this white one? White, this white one is some bone under your gum tissue. Yeah. You guys can make this kind of rectangular shape. The reason why just only cutting is not enough to reposition to frenum because frenum is always easy to reattach to your original position. So there is why we need some space for distinguish this frenum and then your oral tissue, gum tissue. So there is why we, after making this kind of space, we want to implant our another tissue to compensate this area. Let's see. Step by step. And then for make sure there is no remaining soft tissue, so we are drilling, and then this is some uh, spacer to check 
how much of the tissue we can need we will going to use for compensating the space so using this sticker uh, we can get our normal tissue from our aura cavity from the other side and then cut it here because this is the most easiest position to gather this kind of soft tissue as you can expect always aura cavity they have very good regenerative potential so within seven days maybe it will regenerate soon so this is okay to cut this soft tissue from your palate palate means that your upper aura cavity okay after getting this one so you we can approximate the size and then now this is some your tissue from your palate and then you can adjust your tissue in here so what will be the next absolutely you will stitch together to firmly position this soft tissue in your lower lip part and then this tissue can maintain this space and then there is no chance to flatten on can be repositioned to the this side okay so over time you can see they are very 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 well regenerated and then you can see finally the frenum is gone and you can see very good beauty okay this is the basic uh, surgery how you do the frenum frenectomy and then make the space using your own soft tissue from the palate and after that uh, actually frenectomy is not enough sometimes so we need to maintain your frenum in the right position which will reposition to the upper or lower we need some therapeutic exercise which is called myofunctional therapy exercise i will show you one video what is the myofunctional therapy exercise it's quite complicated terminology but actually the basic concept is very simple just move your mouse up and down right and left while you will your tongue also myofunctional exercise for post phrenectomy tongue tie release surgery let's practice a tongue exercise that will help with your tongue tie recovery and establish a proper posture and function level one exercise first week after surgery immediate post-op healing and range of motion snake exercise make a point with your tongue extend the pointed tongue out of your mouth and pull it back in make sure the tip of your tongue does not touch the lips repeat 25 times waggle flap place the tip of your tongue on your upper and lower lips move the tip of your tongue up and down repeat 10 times waggle spot move the tip of your tongue from side to side left right and spot touch the spot with the tip of your tongue Continue to waggle the tongue and return it to the spot. Repeat 10 times. Jawbreaker. With lips closed, point the tongue into your left cheek. It should look like a jawbreaker in the side of your cheek. Hold for 10 seconds. Now move it to the right. Hold for 10 seconds. Pencil pull. Hold a pencil across the front portion of your teeth. Direct the tongue over the pencil with the tip curling down. Hold for five seconds. Direct the tongue over the pencil with the tip curling up. Hold for five seconds. Peanut butter rub. With the tip and middle of your tongue, rub back and forth across the hard palate as if you are licking peanut butter with your tongue. You can use real peanut butter. Repeat 25 times. Spoon hold. Stick your tongue out and make a point. Push a spoon against your pointy tongue. Resist with your tongue for a count of five. Okay, so maybe yeah, like me, you guys also mimic this motion. So this is a basic myofunctional therapy exercise. So using your tongue and lips all together to maintain your movement of your tongue. And then because of this, your frenum is doesn't attach attach the original position so they can maintain in the reposition area
Okay, let's start with the dialogue well, number one. Gingival recession by a labial phenom. Okay, hi Jesse, it's good to see you again. What can I do for you today? Doc, I'm concerned about my gums. I've noticed that my gums are a little bit receded on my lower front teeth. I wonder if it is related to the inv Invisalign treatment I had before. Let me look at your mouth first. Well, also the treatment can lead to gum recession sometimes. So, however, my best guess here is that it's caused by a muscular attachment between the lower lip and gums. Let me show you. Can you hold this mirror for me? Sure. Do you see a muscular attachment when I pull your lip? Yes, I see it. What is it? It is called labial frenum. It seldom extends up close to front teeth. In your case, the frenum talks gum tissue whenever you move your lower lip. Repeated lip movement can cause gum recession. Can you fix the problem? Sure, there is a surgical procedure called phrenectomy. It is a simple surgery to remove a plenum. Further gum recession can be prevented with this procedure. Do I need phrenectomy at this point? I think you'd be a good candidate for it. So I think most of you understand, most of you can understand the well about all of this dialogue. The labial means that you are mm, Lower lip, lower lips called labial, okay. And then phrenectomy surgery. Hi Jesse, today we are going to release your tight labial frenum. I'm a little bit nervous. Is my mouth going to hurt a lot after the surgery? I understand your concern. You will feel uncomfortable when you speak speak or eat. However, after you heal, the discomfort will go away. I'm sure I can handle it. Let me give you a local anesthesia. Please open your mouth. You can close now. I will use an electric knife to cut off the labial frenum. It's not only cutting the frenum but also clotting blood during the procedure. It's a very simple procedure that takes only a couple of minutes. Okay, I'm ready. Jesse, can you hold this pad with your right hand so the electric knife works properly? Please raise your left hand if you feel uncomfortable. Yes, please. Let me hold it. You will smell something burning. Okay, it's done. You can swallow your saliva. The surgical side will feel sore, especially when you eat or drink. But they will get better soon. Just avoid foods and beverages that are too hot or too spicy. You can brush and floss your teeth as normal except for surgical side. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So in this case, uh, previously, we saw the video, they deal with some surgical blade to cut the uh, frenum, but here they're using electrical knife. So the difference to use traditional metal knife and electrical knife is that for electrical knife, you need some reference. So that's why this patient can hold some pad, which can be used as a reference of electricity device. Yeah, this is the only different way. And the other thing is, and then electric knife, they cause some coagulation of the blood. And then um, in the previous video, we saw a lot of blood forming from your tissue. But in this electric knife, there's not much of blood flowing from your side. So your concern is decreased. Okay, and this is my functional therapy. Hi, Jesse. How are things going on? I'm still recuperating, but it's getting better. There's a high likelihood for the labial frenum to grow back to where it was after the tissue is healed. So today, I'm going to show you some exercises. These exercises will help all the muscles around your lips and tongue to maintain the right position and tone. Exercises? I'm not sure I can do well. It is very simple and easy. The reason we do this is that you used to have a tight frenum around your upper lip. It means that muscle around that area were in the wrong position. So you need to make them return to the original position. I see. And then this will make you more good maintenance of your lip position frenum. There are various exercises and devices. The devices cost from few dollars to thousand dollars, but your result does not depend on the price. The most important thing is that you should consistently exercise and properly. How long should I do the exercise? Mm, they consist of four phases. 30 days of habit elimination, 
a week of intensive, four months of generalization, and a year of the habituation. It sounds like a long journey, but it is worth it to put forth the effort. All right, I'll try my best. So when you look at these four pages, maybe depending on the how, how, which kind of um, your face or tongue movement therapy will be applied in certain category. So maybe basically, yeah, most of the similar, but sometimes one type like your facial muscle movement can be highlighted in first part, and then later maybe your tongue movement is less exercises. So depending on the over depending over time, you can change your movement or exercise, and then during this adjust adjustment exercise, your frenum should not be repositioned to your back to your original position. And then also, when the frenum is positioned previously, and they are changed, but if you move your muscle in the way of the previous way, maybe your muscle can induce the frenum go to the original position. So that is why after reposition your frenum to the lower part or upper part, you have to reorganize your muscle orientation to maintain this frenum on that side fixed by the dentist.